It's your boy Mr. Degenerate here back at it again for another damn video and ooh we invincible fans invincible fans we are cooking we are eating and we are eating good all right it is a great time to be an invincible fan not only did we just get off a great season of invincible with invincible season two but where we're making our way into season three but not only that we just got an announcement a few weeks ago that we're getting not only just season three not just season four but season five of invincible we are fucking cooking and wait there's more we have a video game coming and we're still in talks of a live action movie man we are cooking we are eating it's a great time to be an Invincible fan, and I, I, I'm just so happy to be a part of this ride that it is, it is almost tear-jerking. This show is so fucking good. It almost makes me want to read the comics, but I'm like, ooh, I kind of don't want to be spoiled on anything they're going to do. I know they're changing things, but I also don't want to go in like, mm, they fucked with certain things and mm, be mad critical. I just want to take it how it is. And I really have been enjoying what I've been seeing so far with Invincible. So with season two, I know season two came out a few days ago and a lot of people already gave their thoughts and opinion. Um, but for me, what I've noticed is that there's a little mixed reaction to season two. And I could be for normal, uh, uh, numerous things. I think season two fumbles a little bit in terms of like the release scheduling was horrible i don't know how the fuck they did this shit it's so bad like they literally cut the episodes into a, a, the first part and then we get our big climax of the first part and then we have to wait four three months for the next continuation of of season two it was sloppy it was handled horrible and it really killed the pacing of the of the show because you had to wait a, a pretty significant time to continue and yeah but besides all of that season two was so good it was so good i don't think it's better than season one but that's only because season one you know that was the first time you ever got to see invincible at for those who've never read the comic book so you know you see it and you're like holy shit like this is fucking awesome this is different from what we're getting nowadays and it's unique it has a unique uh way of telling uh typical uh superhero tropes and whatnot and flipping them on their heads uh it, it is fucking awesome and in season two is even more better i think there's so much things to love about season two like the simple fact that my favorite character uh debbie voiced by m my home girl uh my, my home my sweetheart sandra O. Oh. she kills it in this show like she's still the highlight of this show she was the highlight of season one she's the highlight of season two she she's the mvp most valued player <laughs> i love this girl and it's so great to have a show where where there's these overpowered cool ass motherfuckers but yet the human character is the most compelling character and dealing with the fallout of everything omni man has did in season one is fucking awesome i could go and talk about all of that shit uh, and i i i will never get bored uh, but then you have obviously Omni Man and the shit that he's doing, voiced by my boy, the goat, the goat himself, J.K. Simmons, aka JJ, <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson. This bro is killing it. Uh, but of course, we got to give it up to uh, Mark, voiced by uh, Stephen Young. This man is so good. I, I hope if we get the live action movie he would be interested in playing mark even though mark is like 16 or or young or teenager in the show i don't know how we would do that but i would like to see him as a cameo somewhere in the movie if we do the movie but 
what I really want to say with this shit is that one of the things that I find so fascinating about season two is that season two is a direct response to season one where I felt like with season one, it was asking the question, what is Omni Man's secret? What is his dirty little secret? And there are so many glimpses in season one where Omni Man is just acting weird. Obviously, you get the ending of the season one uh, of episode one of season one, but throughout the whole show, he's just doing and saying things, and he's very remorseful about some some things. And throughout the whole season one, it's at it's trying to answer that question, and you had uh, Debbie and mark trying to answer that question but m more so deb debbie uh, but mark loved and worshipped really loved and worshipped his dad and so when the big revelation hits it's shocking it shocks the shit out of everyone and everyone has to deal with the fallout of it and i think the biggest question that season two asked is is mark like his father and what is the repercussions of him being like his dad and that's the most compelling part of season two there's so much great shit that's going on in season two but that's the most interesting thing I mean, how i think this question is literally answered in the poster of season two and we get these answers and we get these tidbits of these questions in the form of multiverse where we're seeing mark become basically a vulture mite and literally wiping out half of fucking earth we get it through uh introduction to a really really cool fucking character which is anessa uh which she has the fucking coolest opening uh, but one of the things I love about her so much is that she reminds Mark of his heritage, of the Viltrumite, uh, and what it really means to be a Viltrumite. Um, and I can't wait to see more of her in season uh, three. Uh, but season two really has her as that figure that reminds Mark of his heritage, that you are this these Viltrumites, you this is what we do we conquer and we enslave people this is what we do because we can't leave these people doing shit on their own they'll just destroy and mess their own fucking lives up and it is that same mentality that same thing that omni man was saying to mark and throughout all of season two he is constantly trying to prove that that statement wrong He's constantly trying to prove that he's not like his father and that he has everything under control. This is why throughout the whole of season two, he's literally holding back. Everyone always says or makes the joke that Mark is fucking weak, but I'm like, it's clearly Mark is trying to be the typical standard superhero trope of doing the right thing, always holding back, never uh, always pull your punches like Spider-Man, uh, which funny enough there's a slight spider-man cameo in this but always holding back always doing the right thing and in season two challenges that ideology by saying you are a viltrumite you have these powers you have all this responsibility and your people are conquerors what are you going to be and then langtrum which is the coolest fucking villain i, I know a lot of people just seem to forget about him hell the show seems to forget about him because there's so much crazy shit there's so much stuff that's happening in invincible season two that you just forget about him but i think that's genius because generally speaking all he's doing is asking the question is doing what a great villain does which is propose a question to the hero and the question that he asks mark or challenges mark on is are you like your father and throughout all the multiverse that he's explored and visit he has seen that mark is always the villain in each one of these universe he is not a good man he's not this royal savior he's a villain he's a viltrumite 
everyone's blind to it and he's even blind to it in a certain extent because he's just can't think of a universe or a multiverse that has a good invincible a good mark that he challenges that and i think that's what makes a great villain a great villain challenge the hero's ideology makes them rethink about their life decisions and, and their choices and strengthen the hero and usually in a typical superhero fas fashion you would have the hero get to the breaking point and this is why the show's fucking awesome by the way you get the hero get to their breaking point and then they'll be reminded of their fucking lover or their mom words of wisdom and whatnot and and they'll hold back that final punch that's about to land the killing blow but the fucking team over in invincible is like nope we don't do that over here we flip that shit we flip it over all right we don't do traditional comic book storytelling we play with the genre and they say no have mark kill him and it, then we get this cool fucking moment where he literally says i thought you were stronger and for me when i heard that i literally saw it i was like oh man mark because i know it wasn't he wasn't referring to angstrom lee like oh were you strong no he was referring to himself like i thought i was stronger than this i thought i wasn't like my dad but in truth of the reality is i am just as the man as everyone's been telling me i am i'm just like my father and i'm like oh my goodness this fucking show is amazing and, the, and shout out to uh, steven young bro in that whole segment where he's like breaking down like he's trying his best to like like do the whole okay well you know i i had to do what i had to do all right it, it's just what it is i had to do what i had to do it is what it is but then every single moment he tries to convince himself every moment it keeps coming back to no mark you killed you killed that man and yeah you are just like your father now me personally i think mark did the right thing fuck that guy all right fuck him in his ass all right he deserved that ass beating after he hurt my poor debbie he deserved that ass beating he deserved every single pound town he got but at the same time mark did cross the line he broke his moral code and then the end of the day angstrom won his debate he won that Mark is just like his dad, and he is no different than any Viltramite. It's just a matter of time before everybody gets to see the true Mark. I feel like this is a flip on season one, where Mark and Omni-Man fought, and throughout the whole fight, Omni-Man is whooping Mark's ass. <laughs> like, demolishing this man, even to the point of beat this man to a bloody Pulp just to break his will but then mark reminds omni man of his humanity near the end and so technically speaking a lot of people would say uh mark lost the fight physically but mentally mark won the fight mark saved the day and here is it's the opposite mark beat the living shit out of action lee but at the same time and he did win. However, he lost the argument. Angstrom Lee won the argument. At the end of the day, he proved his point that Mark is no different than all the Vulturemites and his dad. He is just like his dad in so many ways. And just even the way how he was punching the fuck out of Angstrom Lee, it was like to the point where like, the ground started shaking and I think the audio went out. It was like brutal almost on the same level as omni man it was like wow incredible at this point mark is at the most darkest and most vulnerable moment he can't even fucking talk to 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 eve about his problem the girl that he's always gone and always have superhero talks to know he can vent shit to can't even talk to her i think 
it, the way how season two ends is really marked in the most darkest and most vulnerable place because he's starting now to disassociate himself from from human attachments almost like he's starting to become a viltramite in a lot of ways he's starting to disassociate himself from school he's like oh i already missed so much school i just want to go train and whatnot and not keeping that those moral boundaries those human connections like going to school amber even though amber i know a lot of people really fucking hate amber and i am kind of like i don't think this relationship was ever gonna last so i didn't really care amber in season two i think is way better um and their relationship and how it ends i think it's so natural i think it was perfect um he can't even go and visit her and connect with her again and it's like wow it it, is it's these little things and just not being able to talk to eve even when older eve spoiler like older eve is like hey like go tell younger younger me how you feel it's can't do it and i think where we're gonna see mark in season two we're gonna see him go through even more of a dark descent he's gotta work his way back up to the light and i'm all for it i think that's some great fucking storytelling right there season three is gonna be fucking off the chain because we're gonna get a more darker a more visual um mark now knows the weight of killing and what it means now he's off the chains and anything could go anything could go sideways and now that he's disassociating and disattaching himself from human values the things that make him human it's gonna be fucking awesome i cannot wait i i I think this show is going places that i I can't wait to be explored there's so much other stuff to talk about but at the core i think season two is really is the deconstruction of mark and whether or not he's his father's son and by the end of season two we find out in a dark way that you are just as much your father's son than you might think. And I think, you know, as someone who, you know, has always grown up being told, oh, you're just like your father, you're just like your father. <laughs> With Mark, that 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 words sting even harder after the decision he's made at the end of season two. And I can't wait to see how they explore that. That's season three is gonna be fucking awesome. Anywho, guys, I know this has been a long video, and I'm sorry this video is so late, uh, but I just had to talk about this shit. Season season two was so fucking good. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what do you think of season two. What was your favorite moment? Uh, and comment below. Let me know. And as always, uh, stay tuned. There's more videos on the way. Oh, by the way, actually, my favorite moment in season two was, uh, again, Anessa's uh, introduction. That was fucking sick. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, uh, post your comments down below. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. It's your boy, Mrs. Generate, signing out. Have a good one.